Okay, hi. This is David Jefferson Potter. I've tried to draw a duplicate of uh, the image you posted. I guessed at the ceiling height, so I think it's fairly close. There's the uh, siding that you don't want on the inside, but you do want it on the outside. Like that. We don't want it like that. So, like I was saying, now this is not a cross-section camera. I use I recommend a cross-section camera because you can do things more accurately and precisely. But I'm just going to go ahead and use this camera. I'm going to click on the attic wall. There it is. That's This is the wall polyline I was speaking of. There's a move handle here. There's edge handles. Move handle, move handle. And the top handle. Okay. What I'm going to do is, see, this is the edit toolbar. You know, it says edit on it, but most of the time it's docked down here, so you don't see that it's the edit toolbar, but that's the edit toolbar. And there's the break line tool that I was re referring to. Left click on that to put you in that tool mode. And left click on the polyline where you want to make a break in it. There's the break. The brakes are diamond shaped. The move handles are square. I'll put another break over here and a third break in the middle. I'm left click and then left click. Left click to go to the tool mode. That allows you to reshape the wall polyline. Now, I think I will go to uh, a cross section because camera because this is very imprecise in this 3D camera. I'm going to just control tab back to plan. That's on the keyboard control tab. Switches you between open windows in a, in a any windows program. And use the uh, back clip cross section camera so I can just look at this part of the model from where I left click to where I release the mouse. See how more precise this is? Well, I hope you do anyway. And there's the break, break, break that I made. I'm going to click on this part of the polyline. And it's a polyline because it's made of more than two lines one, two, three, four, five, six. What is that, six or seven, something like that. But each of these line entities is an object, and they connect, and they're used to uh, define three-dimensional objects, like walls. And I'm going to just I use, use the uh, move handle here. I use the move handle over here. Left-click, drag. That's all I'm doing. Now adjust this corner here so it's a little more symmetric. Symmetric? No, parallel. That's the word I want. Okay, so now we have we move the siding out of there, but we have a hole. Let's go back to the 3D camera. You see, we're still okay on the outside, but now we have a hole. So I'm hitting Control Tab, by the way. Now, on an inside space that's defined by uh, walls, the first thing you'll when you left click is you'll get the uh, room dialog. So I'm going to hit the Tab key. I'll do that. Start that again. I'll hit the space bar and deselect. Left click, hit the tab key to select the wall polyline. Then, see, the break line tool comes up. And I'm going to break over here. Break over here. Doesn't particularly matter where initially, because I can straighten these up afterwards. Now, with those three breaks, I created two additional new line segments, this one and this one. Now, I'm going to take this and put it up here, and then we'll... This would leave a hole. See, if I did, if I just left this like this, let me show you in the camera view. You'll show it. Well, you can just barely see it. Maybe in a vector view camera it would no. Okay. Anyway, trust me. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the this and fix up those holes. Yeah, they're just you can barely see them. <clears throat> it's better to develop habits of being thorough and precise with this software. You don't have to be anal like me, but uh, I think it helps. Okay, so there's that new wall polyline here, and this one up here. That's one way to do it. And it's probably the easiest in this case. Uh, the pony wall method would be you go up to the attic level and take this wall here, and uh, see there. There's a when you open it. <coughs> Go to the wall types tab of the wall specification, then you get uh, a choice to make it a pony wall. 
where you can make the lower, as I suggested, you could make it uh, interior six and the upper uh, siding six. But actually, this is a little bit more complicated. This would work. Nothing wrong with it. But I don't think it's necessary. Just what I'm sure. As long as you understand what wall polylines are and how to work with them, then you can get this done. And whether you do it with a sometimes a, a pony wall is a good s solution. Sometimes just altering the uh, uh, wall polylines is all you need to do. And in terms of wall polylines, let's look at this wall over here. Left click, hit the next button. Now I've got the wall polyline. Uh, I, I rarely ever use it for this purpose, but you can by using breaks. We'll put a couple of breaks there and then grab this. You can actually make holes in the wall, you know, with, with nothing but line breaks. Uh, in 17 years of using the software, I, I've only used this a couple of times, but, uh, you know, it doesn't show up in plan view, but, I mean, there, there's a hole in the wall over there. Okay. And that's what uh, wall polylines how they're used. I'm going to put that back. And these manual edits uh, stay un until you manual. Oh, okay. When I put that back and then I hit the selected the wall again, the breaks that I put in there went away. Uh, in earlier versions, they didn't. But uh, they keep making the software smarter and smarter. Anyway, I hope this helps you. Uh, I, this kind of thing is not very easy to communicate just with words and maybe pictures, but uh, a video tutorial is, is really the way to, to do it. And I hope this helps you. Thank you.